Uh, so I'm Brian Lin. I'm the software OG software area coordinator, and I'm going to talk uh, about some of the details of uh, our plans regarding bear tokens and the software that we provide and documentation and, and what we plan on providing. All right. Uh, so first off, uh, just wanted to go back in history a little bit and talk about, well, how did we get here? So uh, as, as Frank uh, mentioned in his introduction, um, we've been using Globus and GSI for authentication for uh, uh, what over 15 years, 17 years, something like that. Um, and um, it was in May of 2017 that they announced that the, they would end support for the open source Globus toolkit uh, in, in January 2018. Um, and, and we released an announcement shortly afterwards to talk about how we will continue to support the, um, the, the software that, that everyone was using to, to support their research activities. Um, and then shortly afterwards in November of that year, uh, we helped form the Grid Community for uh, Forum. Um, and uh, the Grid Community Forum is a collection of folks from around the world that were interested in continuing support of the, the uh, Globus Toolkit, um, which we forked off uh, as, the, as the Grid Community Toolkit. And so the OSG software team has been involved in, in that project um, and helping with uh, um, making sure that, that uh, the, the Grid Community Toolkit is updated in Apple. Uh, and then in December of 2019, uh, we announced what our, our next evolution of these the OSG software stack would be. Uh, this included uh, the bear tokens for authentication and authorization, uh, and um, a dependence on HTTP and HTTPS and WebDAV for data transfer. So, um, you know, this is it's a couple of years later now, and and uh, things are really starting to heat up. So, what's what's next? Uh, there are a couple of WLCG milestones uh, in here uh, this month. Um, the WLCG wants uh, the various pilot factories to be able to submit um, pilots with uh, tokens to authenticate to sites. Uh, WLCG Vons admin servers will be uh, turned off at the end of the year in favor of the, the IAM uh, OIDC provider that can also uh, sign Vons proxies. Um, and oops. Um, excuse me, sorry. Um, and uh, in uh, February 2022, which is what, what this workshop is, is really all about, is when uh, OSG 3.5, um, uh, that, that is the planned retirement for OSG 3.5. And that, that means that um, we won't be distributing any more uh, grid community toolkit packages in our YUM repositories. Uh, the remaining OSG packages um, that, that are shipped in OSG 3.6 and, and uh, in the future will have no GCT dependencies. Uh, the, and the, this, this includes things like Condor. Uh, but one important thing to note is that Xroot D itself will continue to support X509 and VOMS proxies uh, without any uh, GS, uh, grid community toolkit dependencies uh, because it has its own implementations there. Uh, and then shortly after um, uh, March 2022, um, all WLCG storage endpoints will, will need to provide support for tokens. Um, and in March 2023, the WLCG experiments will begin doing, or will, will move to data stage out and reads performed with tokens. Uh, and then for WLCG sites in March 2024, that's when X509 client auth becomes fully optional on sites. So how does this all work? Uh, I won't get too much into this. Uh, Brian covered a, a lot of it, um, but um, the, the basic idea with X509 proxies is that uh, your, your collaboration uh, that, that you support um, will generate their X509 proxy. Uh, and that this, in a lot of cases uh, for uh, production workflows, uh, this, this X509 proxy uh, is, is the key to the castle. Um, this will be passed along to the whatever the pilot factory is. The pilot factory will will use that to submit to the CE, 
uh, and the, the CE will authenticate and authorize based on that X509 proxy. Uh, and the, eventually it'll make its way to your execution point, your, um, uh, your worker node, what have you. Uh, and then that same X509 proxy is then used to access storage uh, and potentially write to storage, depending on, on the, uh, the permissions of the, the, the proxy. Uh, in the token world, um, we, we can do pilot authorization with, with bear tokens. Um, and uh, in the short term, uh, the, the, um, the, the, there will still be X509 proxies for, for storage access. Uh, so, um, it, in in similar fashion, the the collaboration or VO will generate the the pilot token and the X509 proxy pass it to the factory, um, and that the factory will then submit the job uh, with both of those credentials to the CE. But the the CE will only authenticate uh, the uh, pilot based on the the pilot token, uh, and then when and then uh, as the credentials are passed to the execution point, it only needs to pass along the X509 proxy. Uh, and that X509 proxy is then used to, to access that storage at the point. Uh, for authorization uh, along this full chain without uh, X509 proxies, uh, we imagine that the, the storage token, or a storage token will replace the, the X509 proxy. Uh, and um, in a similar fashion, the pilot token makes its way to the CE, but the, the storage token is what makes its way to the, the execution endpoint that, that allows for, for access to the, the storage endpoint. Uh, and so I'm not going to go into a lot of the details about how, how all tokens work. Um, and. Uh, Anybody interested in learning more should definitely check out tomorrow's uh, technical working sessions, um, including information on tokens and hands on and then uh, the CE hackathon where we'll have uh, staff on hand to um, help submit token based pilots to your CE if your, your CE is, is updated and ready. So uh, if you manage a VO, uh, what what do you have to do for your, your token transition? Uh, so if, going back to the, the diagram where um, we talk about the, the pilot authorization with, with bearer tokens, you're gonna have to start generating the, these pilot tokens. So there are a couple of ways that, that you can do that. Um, and I've listed them here in, in kind of what's the, the most feature rich to what uh, the, the least complicated setup. Uh, so uh, Dave Dykstra has been working uh, hard on um, integrating the HashiCorp's faults um, into a high throughput computing uh, setup. Um, so we have an, an RPM with some configuration. So to, to set up your, your vault server, um, you can just install that and then your vault server will um, act as your interface to your OIDC provider, uh, like CI logon or IAM. Uh, and then your users or, or your uh, service managers can then uh, access these tokens um, or uh, talk with vaults to get uh, user tokens or, or robot tokens, uh, say for your pilots or for storage. Uh, and uh, the, the a lot of the work that Dave has done uh, has been in improving uh, integration with Condor and uh, local Kerberos. Uh, so um, if you want to see more details, uh, definitely check out Dave's uh, talk from the European HD Condor Week. Uh, if you don't need to worry about issuing tokens for your user and you only need robot tokens, uh, we did release an OSG token renewer service. Um, and this uh, service, uh, once configured and, and set up um, to, to get uh, the refresh tokens from your OIDC provider, um, it, it, it will run periodically to make sure that an, any of the access tokens say, for your pilots will, will be kept up to date. Um, and the most simple method, if you just need the the robot tokens is to um, serve uh, a series of files um, 
uh, over the web uh, to satisfy um, OIDC discovery. Um, and basically you would have your private key on a host um, and then you have the, the web server that, that publishes the, the certificate information and whatnot to well-known locations. Um, and uh, then you would have some sort of cron job or, or something to uh, run the site tokens admin create token command line tool uh, to, to generate the, the access tokens that, that your pilots could then use. Uh, and this is what the OS pool uses. Um, and so we have this, uh, our private key living on uh, our Glenn WMS front end and the, the cron job running this command. Um, and we just serve the, the necessary public files over GitHub pages. And you can check that, that out um, at the, the link there. Um, one other thing to think about uh, for on the VO side or the collaboration side is to plan how uh, you would like to uh, like sites to, to map your uh, the pilot tokens. Um, so today, you know, sites map tokens to local issuers um, and will mostly use bombs attributes for this. Uh, sites at the at the moment can. Uh, map to local users based on uh, the token issuer and, and the token subject. Um, and, and now is a pretty good inflection point to evaluate whether or not uh, your collaboration still needs multiple user mappings. So uh, the, the main use case that I can think of uh, for mapping um, or for separating users uh, or separating different um, or di having different local site mappings based on different bombs attributes is to protect your all powerful X509 proxies from say your regular users. Uh, but in this day and age, many jobs are running within singularity. So we don't really need to depend on the, the Unix account for, for that separation. So it's worth thinking uh, about whether or not you really need multiple user mappings. And once you've made these decisions, uh, uh, please provide us the, the token issuer information um, and desired default user mappings um, so that we can get everything registered in uh, our OSD topology. Um, and we can start thinking about um, packaging those default mappings, similar to how we have uh, VOMS map file defaults. All right, um, so on the site side uh, for your CEs, um, uh, personally, I think this is a, a, a somewhat easy process, um, but your, your CEs will require Condor CE5 and Condor 9 to start supporting tokens. Uh, if you have met these requirements, uh, you should definitely attend tomorrow's Condor C hackathon uh, to start receiving token-based pilots. Uh, right now, I recommend installing from OSG 3.5 upcoming. Um, and uh, the, this will allow your CE to support both token and X509 based pilots. Uh, but if the collaborations you support are ready for token only submission, then you should speak to your collaborations. Um, you can install the CE from OSG 3.6. Um, and honestly, the, the, the main difference between the CE and 3.5 and 3.6 is that GSI support. Uh, so there, there won't, if you've updated to the CE in upcoming and then down the line you update to the, the CE in, in OSG 3.6, uh, you really won't need to make configuration changes. Uh, for your storage endpoints, uh, think your, your grid FTP server. Uh, these storage endpoints will require XRD5. Uh, this is available in OSG 3.5 upcoming. Uh, it's not yet in OSG 3.6 because there are some configuration changes that we have to make in our default packaging, uh, but we're expecting a release in, in two weeks. Um, and so we ship some default configuration uh, in the OSG XRD standalone package. Um, and this will provide external access to POSIX file systems. It supports HTTP, TPC, uh, and it will accept X509 proxies, VOMS proxies, and, and bearer tokens. And we have some documentation on that uh, right now. 
Uh, for this one, I recommend uh, if you have a grid FTP server right now and you have to um, transition, I would wait two weeks uh, to install from OSG 3.6 because there are going to be configuration changes between OSG 3.5 and OSG 3.6. Uh, namely, uh, because we're dropping GSI, we are dropping LC maps. Um, so we are getting rid of extra DLC maps. Uh, in this configuration, the X509 bombs proxies auth is automatic, automatically handled by the default OSG configuration. Uh, and then you configure your file access control using uh, XRUT auth. Uh, and, and the documentation will come uh, alongside the, the releases of the um, OSG XRUT standalone. Uh, but if you can't wait Ryan? to, uh, yes. Sorry, uh, you're just letting you know you're over time. So if you can start to wind things down, that'd be great. Yep, just about done. Uh, and so uh, if you can't wait uh, two weeks, um, you can install from OSG 3.5, and this should say OSG 3.5 upcoming. Um, and here you configure your X509 bombs proxy authentication using LC map. So your grid map file and your bombs map file. Uh, and then um, you still have to configure your file access control using the XRD off file. All right, uh, so those, uh, that's, those are the high points. Um, and if you have any uh, other questions, um, or we are running out of time, uh, but there's going to be open discussion, policy discussion, technical working sessions, et cetera. Uh, but you can find us on Slack um, in the software channel. Uh, you should subscribe to the community mailing list, the software discuss. Uh, if you want to receive announcements, uh, you, you'll, uh, you should subscribe to the sites at opensensecrit.org. Um, and uh, if you uh, find any issues or otherwise need help, uh, send an email to help at opensensecrit.org. That's all I got. Okay, thanks, Brian. Sorry for rushing you at the end there. No worries. Um, we do have a couple of questions already, or people wanting to ask questions queued up here. Um, I don't know if you can see those and, and if you want to do those or if you want me to. I can, but I don't know the order in which they. Uh, Eustace was up first. I think they're in the order that they came, so. Oh, Andy. Uh, yeah, literally. Hi, I'm Brian. Can you hear me? Hey, Eustace. Yep. Yeah, um, thanks, Louis. Um, you mentioned it was several times and I'm, I got a bit confused. Um, you mentioned the uh, plan to um, map the pilot token to the site mapping mm -hmm. um, right now i mean pilot is not mapped anywhere um, i mean it's just to submit to ce that's all um, does it mean that the jobs which are running inside the pilots will use the pilot token or the jobs itself will have their own tokens the jobs themselves will the jobs inside the pilots will, will eventually have their own tokens for for storage access the the pilot mapping that i'm talking about if you check out your voms map file default i think user share somewhere uh you'll see that the there are cms roles um, in the voms attributes that are by default mapped to different users based on the different roles so i believe there's a cms pilot role and uh i forget the, all the other ones offhand um so may, maybe at your site you've you've overridden the defaults and i, I don't necessarily know what uh, what mappings you you may have maybe you just take all of the cms um, mappings and just map them to, or all the CMS FOMS attributes and map them to a single user. Uh, uh, but but that's it's basically the the user you'll you'll see in the CEQ. Does does that answer your question? Yeah yeah thank you. Yep. All right, uh, Doug, uh, you're up next. Yes, um, slide six, please. That'll help inform the question. I see the storage token migrates all the way down. Mm -hmm. Because it's a bearer token and it's short lived, right? Yep. It will have to be refreshed. Yes. From the ex execution point out, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, what infrastructure will the sites have to put in place so that we don't? create a DOS attack because, right, if this same token for production users spread across a lot of compute jobs at a site, 
Yep. They all have to be refreshed at essentially the same time, right? Because the tokens, yep. it's the same token. Yep. I, I think that, um, you know, it's not too different from the, the X519 setup, at least for the, the storage token. It, this is a, uh, the, ideally, the, it's the, the collaboration or the VO that will be uh, refreshing the storage token and then passing it uh, along down the chain and then doing the, the delegation of the, the refresh so token. So sort of the upstream will take care of the refresh and then the periodically the execution point has to do a pull. Uh, not not a pull. I think it will get it should get pushed down to it. Um, but but this is similar to the how the X509 proxies work, right? The whenever uh, the X509 proxies are regularly refreshed from the VO because you don't want all of the different sites to have the ability to um, create these all power, power powerful X509 proxies. So I, I don't think the the model really has to change in. In, in our minds. It's just that tokens are shorter lived so that they, uh, this will have to happen more frequently at the VO level. So we're assuming a push model all the way through. That'll work for uh, HPCs that are disconnected? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. I, I always forget the, the exact mechanics around like the, the Harvester HPC setup and how they how you guys support the, the kind of the lack of network connections. Um, I don't know if you guys are, are pushing your, your X509 proxies down, down the line to some shared file system that, that eventually make it to the execution point or, or what have you. Yeah, but, Harvester's a pull. At least on the HPCs, it pulls information from the centralized uh, system. Sure. Well, and then I, it gets used. The, this is certainly a good use case that, that we should discuss. And I, I know Fahwe will be presenting later um, and will be around tomorrow as well. Uh, so um, we, we should certainly talk through this. All right, I, uh, I'm gonna stop questions here so that we get at least some break.